Hi, I'm Kevin Nealon. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. I'm serious. Believe me. And that's why I'm leaving right now. Hi there, welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. I am Jake Hogan, and we are alone, except for Ryan, who's over there, and Ryan, Ryan doesn't count. We've said that very time. Producer Ryan doesn't count as a real person. So ostensibly we are alone, just you and I. And this is a podcast that I do. It's a show where I get interesting people to come on and talk about my problems with me. Hopefully I learn something from it, and you learn something from it, and we learn something about the guest. It's kind of a free for all of fun and information. That's the new title of the show. Free for all of fun information. Welcome to free for all of fun information. I'm Jay Hogan, your host. People may ask, who are you, Jake Hogan? And I will say that I am a writer. I've written for many TV shows, including The Simpsons and Frasier and Malcolm in the Middle and some movies and DreamWorks movies and other fancy, fancy fabulous things. Uh, but this is uh, me getting in front of the camera because I'm a whore and I just need that kind of attention. Cool? Are you cool with that? Uh, maybe you are, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. If you have any comments or suggestions about the show, and, a, and I really need your suggestions on questions, uh, viewer mail questions that I would ask uh, my guests, please write into dbawjk at gmail.com. That's Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. dbawjk at gmail.com with your suggestions, your criticisms, lovely compliments, any gift cards you want to send, it's all there at DBAWJK. Um, and I'd be very excited to hear from you and to hear any real uh, comments. So the comments I've been getting have been great. I've really enjoyed uh, connecting with people in that way. And that's what the show ultimately is about, is me connecting with people. That's why I'm literally doing it without a joke. So please contact me and we will talk. Today's show features the great Kevin Nealon. Kevin is a very funny uh, I knew him as a stand-up comedian first, but of course he was in Saturday Night Live for many years, and then he was an actor on Weeds, and he's also a, uh, a fabulous visual artist. He actually paints really great paintings that I own one of, and he is uh, also an author. He does many things. He even has a uh, YouTube show where he goes hiking. Uh, Kevin goes hiking with celebrities, so it's uh, it maybe called Hiking with Celebrities. He'll tell us in a, in a bit. And what I wanted to talk to Kevin about was something that has been sort of... A, on my mind. Kevin is a very interesting fella. He's done many things. He's had a varied life. He's lived in many different places, but he walks in a package of normalcy. He's just a regular guy in a lot of ways, but in many, many ways, he's not a regular guy. I feel like I'm never a regular guy. I feel like I'm always a little bit odd, a little bit out of the box, a little bit strange. I mean, I try to dress as normal as I can, but people can see I'm a weirdo. Uh, I, you know, I've always been heavy in a world of people that are thin in Los Angeles. I'm just a little bit out of step and feeling a little bit odd in the world. But is it better to be odd in the world and adjust and try to be yourself authentically? Or is it better and safer to sort of appear more normal and then bring out the weirdo when it's safe. Um, I don't know. Maybe authentically weird all the time is good, although I think you might uh, uh, scare some people away in your life who you might rather have in your life. You might embarrass your family and, and kids and stuff like that. And I don't know. There's a, there's a line you want to walk. If you're going into school, your parents, your, your kid's school, you don't want to be perceived as that weirdo necessarily. You just want to be perceived as a dad. Is it something you can turn on and off? Or is it, is it something that uh, you should just decide? And also, if I am now trying to be my most authentic self, should I even care about that kind of thing? But I think you can't not care about that thing, that kind of thing, because you're in society and society makes demands on you. And, you know, I'm not going to be walking around in a Scottish kilt all day <laughs> just because I want a Scottish kilt. And people would say, are you Scottish? And I would have to explain that I'm not. And it'd be unusual. So I have to figure out who I am and who I want to be. And it's some of it's a choice. Uh, I once heard David Byrne once describe the Talking Heads and saying, we're going to go on stage and not wear any show clothes and just be ourselves. And that's why the Talking Heads were just wearing, you know, chinos and shirts and performing. And then he realized that that's a choice too. That any choice that you make is a choice. And the choice to not dress up as rock and roll stars and be a rock and roll star is still a choice. So the choice to wear a... Uh, a button-down shirt and a baseball cap is a choice, even if it seems normal-ish. 
Um, so that's what I want to discuss with Kevin. And I hope it's of interest to you. And it's definitely of interest to me. And hopefully we'll hear some lovely music and then see Kevin right after this. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. I appreciate you being here. It's Are a great favor. Are you kidding favor. me? Do you know how hard it is to get on this show? <laughs> <laughs> I do know. You I do, do know. know. Yes. It's, it's hard for you to do it. It's very hard for everybody to be here. It's hard to get here. It's hard to do it. And then when they do it, um, everybody, everybody without fail falls in love with the show. It's, it's just... the best show. I grew up <laughs> listening to this show. I got to be exactly. honest with you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of pe people did. I'm kind of an icon to all those podcasters. Just trying to think when we first met, like 30 years ago. Yeah, probably. I, I think that we actually met... I'm looking maybe, at you like I don't recognize you. Maybe earlier than that. I believe that I did a stand-up when I was in the old stand-up days where That's right. you were on the bill, I was just starting out, and you were on the bill, and you were kind of just starting out too. Was it at like, Caesars Palace? No, it was not no, at Caesars was. Palace. Like a local club here okay. in LA. And, and I just remembered you being extraordinarily funny and thinking, okay, well, he's just starting. We'll see what happens with him. And then it's like, you got really good and I dropped out of stand-up comedy. Yeah, you were lucky to drop out. Yeah. Because now you be, you went and became a great writer and producer. And, and the world's greatest podcaster. A creator and, yeah, a, and a great podcaster. <laughs> Who would have known back then there would be podcasts? No, I know. It's uh, it's really, I have over a billion listeners. Really? Yes. And like in the world? It's in the world. It's translated to many, many languages. I have a billion listeners, but they can't really hear me that well from over in Europe. <laughs> really? You know I mean? They're listening should, for they, me. They use the electronics. Yeah. I would highly recommend oh, putting really? it out over the internet. This is much nice. easier to hear. Nice. Much easier to hear. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, Kevin. Thanks for uh, having me. You're one of the reasons I wanted you on my show early. You're one of the very first guests-ish. Really? really? Well, within the first 10, 20 people, this thing. It's weird because we made we made a few, but where this is, you know, I don't know what, what order this is going on, but you're early on. But I always thought that you, uh, you know, you're a very interesting fellow to me because you have extensive experience as a stand-up comic. You're yeah. also a writer. I you're... think I have 10,000 hours of doing stand-up. <laughs> yes, okay. So I know so what I'm doing. Pass the Malcolm Gladwell test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And then you've, you've you know you're a book right you've written books written you've couple written books other yeah. things you've been an actor a real life actor for some acting right you are also an artist like an a real goddamn artist I like to create art yeah, yeah I have yes. one of I have a Neilan I have a Neilan I went really? to your that art show oh, that's that you right had, you did and I bought a, I bought a Neilan wow thank yeah. you for that well, thank you. You know, uh, I've been doing art all my life, really, but never organized like that. I would just doodle, you know, on the side yeah. of the papers. If I'm in a club, I'd doodle a, the right. comic up there on a napkin, and they'd always want it. Right. I said, really? This is like, this is horrible. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, but it's good. Yeah. That's not horrible. Finally, it's great. they had a cold, and they just needed yeah. the napkin no, to blow the nose. You're actually <laughs> really good, and you capture something very interesting in people. I, you had to choose famous people for that book, but, but you can see something, and you... You uh, you know bring it out, it's, but they're not all famous in my book. I exaggerate. My brush yes, is the same, right? It um, I I would also love to draw passengers on airplanes across mm -hmm. from me, right? And most of the time they were sleeping, right? You know, so they wouldn't see me drawing them. Would you draw their dental work or get extensively involved in what's going on in the? I would draw their dental work. I would draw any kind of work they had on themselves. <laughs> that's great. You know, whether it was um, the stomach stapling or anything. Really? But, yeah. That's a, you can see a lot from that airplane seat. Well, I would have to unbutton their shirt very slowly. <laughs> All right. So, right. Yeah, so there are crimes involved. All right. Well, don't, do not <laughs> do not document the crimes. That's my big suggestion to you. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a do good not point. Document the crimes. Um, but the the one of the things the the premise of the podcast is I have a problem and I talk to somebody I know. interesting. I love that about idea. It. And the problem I have is it this, a real problem? Well, kind of. Is it a big problem? It's not a big annoying. problem, but it's it's, an, it's it's something that's on my mind. It's is, it, like, is it annoying to other people or to you? No, it's it's a it's it's only to me, and it's about how shall I live? Really, it's and that's about a problem. How shall I live? So the specific of it is this: you are an extraordinary person who True. hides in an ordinary in an ordinary persona. True. You can't be you without walking through the world as a sort of regular guy. But in here, you're not a regular guy. You can't like the subliminal the 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 subliminal message bit right. only works when somebody looks 
completely normal and is talking <laughs> completely normally and then says something very strange underneath it. Yeah. Okay, that's that is key to kind of your stand up, your persona, and yet when you do your stand up, you're extraordinary, you're super funny, super unusual, super smart. It's weird in that <laughs> you really have me mistaken for no, somebody I don't. else. No, I know. At Gary Shandling's memorial, your m tribute to him was profound and hysterical at the same time, and Thank you. and very smart. And you know, Gary was very smart, and he didn't hang out with dummies. You know, it's like you're you've got a lot going on. And I thought it was as a writer, I was impressed with your writing. Thank and, you. Uh, and 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 so you're definitely more than a regular guy walking through the world, but you contain it in a regular guy form. Because you know what, Jay, I have imposter syndrome. Okay. I feel like I've gotten away with things for a long time because yeah. I drove out here from Connecticut, mm -hmm. just wanting to be a stand-up. Right. With no experience at all. And I'd slowly get into it and I get on stage or, or acting jobs. I thought, these people are really good. They're actors, they're professional comedians. And I just, you know, I have a BS in marketing okay. from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut mm -hmm. and actually a doctorate now, honorary doctorate. Really? I have an honorary doctorate and I also also the honorary mayor of uh, Palisades, Pacific Palisades oh, for fantastic. two years. That's congrats. So, Does that mean you ride in the parade, the, the I did, yeah. 4th of July parade? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I only did it because my son was about 10 at the time. Right. I thought he would like that. Maybe Do you have mine. like a Palisade Secret Service detail that follows you around, like yes. people in polo shirts? And <laughs> that is true, Jay. But unfortunately, they're only honorary Secret Service. Oh, okay. So well, they don't know fine. what they're doing. They're not, nobody will throw their body in front of you to save you. <laughs> they have imposter syndrome. Sure, I get it. Yeah. So you have imposter syndrome. We all have imposter syndrome. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually kind of a driver sometimes of how to work and do stuff. But I, I also think that it's. Um, it, it makes me feel better if somebody criticizes me or gives me a bad review. I say, well, I'm not really doing this as a right. profession. I'm like an imposter. Right. So, so what is your problem? So my problem is, should I veer towards normal? I've always been, I've always felt like a weirdo. Yeah. Uh, I've always felt a, like a- like You a, feel like you're kind of crazy inside. Well- I've yeah, always said that, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that I have crazy inside. I'm, I'm, I'm- I've always been heavy. I've always been a guy who's sort of like on the on the outs. Sometimes. Let's back up a little bit. Yep. You've always been heavy. Mm -hmm. Were you thin at one point? You've when always was, been heavy. When, when I was always been maybe heavy. two months old. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, if you've always been heavy, heavy, then that's normal for you, right? But it's not normal for the world. So I'm talking about how I walk through the world. So you're trying to adapt to the world to your peers um and how everybody well, else Well, I is. do. I I think I, I understand I, that. I can fit I I can fit in or try to fit in yeah. and as best I can, but I can also I see other people who just you know, who just love being the individual, love being the the standout, love being the strange person, the weirdo, and even get cred for being the weirdo and being the person who's who's unusual and, you know, the the, you know, the guy who is they say, oh, Aristotle, he's just ignore. Him. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's fine. <laughs> you know, you know, so you, I could be that guy, the standout weirdo, if I really sort of allowed myself to be. Yeah. Or I can walk through the world kind of as I do in conservative clothes and and be a regular guy. And I, I, I vacillate between these two things. Yeah. So, so your problem is, um, how do you? But you'd be accepted in a in a normal world where you shouldn't be heavy and what else? If I'm a we if I'm if I allow my subconscious or everything that to flow out of me that I'm thinking, I people might hate me or I I'd, I'd be I'd be weird, I'd be trained, I might be ostracized, or I would be lifted up as a hero and then treated like a cult leader or something <laughs> yeah. like that. One of those two things would happen. Yeah. Uh, I suspect the first, but. Should I? And here's here, another example. You grew up partially in Germany for four years. I lived in Germany okay. as a kid. As a kid, yeah. and you so you moved away as a kid, and then came back as a kid. Did you have trouble figuring out how to fit in to the world there? Um, well, America became kind of uh, foreign to me because I lived in Germany for four years as a kid, six until I was ten. Right. Those were the formative years there. Where you, I mean, I learned how to speak fluent German. I lived in a German neighborhood, unlike all the other Americans. They lived on military bases because right. their father was in the military or mother. And my father worked for a helicopter company. 
So we lived in a German neighborhood. So all of my friends were German. So when I came back to um, to the U.S., it was a whole different kind of a society for me. They didn't teach German in high school or right. grammar school. All was French and Spanish. That was it. Right. So I kind of started losing the German a little bit, and and uh, I had no friends. And I had the old toys I had from when I left. Right, um, which are really cool because in Germany they didn't have American toys. So yeah, it took a so while to kind of adapt. How'd you fit, and fit into in into the German, the world of German kids? I don't remember it was so long yeah. ago, but yeah. it was pretty easy because I remember going uh, going around with these German kids and exchanging toys. You know, yeah. I would give them my really cool American toys, and I would take their like lead lead French soldiers, you know, that were <laughs> with lead paint on right. them. And my mother goes, "You traded your mousetrap for these two soldiers?" Right. Uh, did you ever interrogate them? I mean, I don't know what German kids like to do, honestly. I just think maybe they interrogate each other. I uh, know. I, you know, I didn't interrogate them, although I would ask them questions. Sure. But, you know, at the time, I didn't really, I wasn't really that aware of the whole Holocaust thing and right. the Nazis. Although I did go to a friend's house and his father uh, was in the um, German Navy. Okay. Um that would be a Napsy? Sure. Napsy, yeah. <laughs> Napsy, sure. No, listen, <laughs> I, th I can imagine if you're a German citizen and and not everybody was was uh, ideologically uh, attached to Hitler yeah, all the time. That's although, right. having lived in America now for the past five, six years, I can see how things can go awry pretty darn quickly. Wait a minute. You lived here for the last five or six years? Yes, I have. Where were you before that? Uh, I was still in America, but America itself has changed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always been here. I actually literally always been in Los Angeles. Like, I've lived yeah. in the same. You're born here. Five square miles. I, I'm born in New York, but lived near Brentwood or Encino or any of those places my entire life. Okay, well, let's go back now yeah. to your problem. Okay. Uh, first of all, you live in Hollywood, um, which is not normal to begin with. Right. And you see all kinds of people here in Hollywood. One of the reasons I stayed in Los Angeles from Connecticut, aside from doing stand-up, right. I went down to Venice Beach, and on the Strand there, I saw all these performance artists, jugglers, right. guys with chainsaws. You know, Sean Morey, I don't know if you remember him, he's a great juggler and a mm -hmm. comedian, went on to do The Tonight Show. Right. And there's a guy who was roller skating with a turban on and sure. playing the guitar. Right. And I thought, wow, this is this is kind of free out here. You can do what you want, right? right. Well, that, that, that's exactly it. I could be, I could put on a turban and yeah. struggle with roller blades or something and I could be that guy. Yeah. I could be that guy. And or, the other thing about losing weight is yeah. um, some people, you're used to seeing them at a certain weight. Yeah. And when they lose weight, Looks like something is wrong with him, like Absolutely. Al Roker. Yeah, like it looks like, like he deflated. Like his head is too big. For yeah, his body something, now. something's wrong. He didn't yeah. lose the weight in his head. It was no, just no. In the rest of his body. Yeah, no, something's wrong. He's uh, you, you do fat people look older when they lose weight. It's just everything droops and everything. Yeah, so that's true. By the way, fit, that's true. Fit or fat, they say. Like you could be fit or you could be fat. I lost um, a lot of weight, and I'm only twenty, so I look a lot wow. older now. Yeah, you, you yeah. stop doing that. Oh, well, it man. could also be the hiking. You do, you do, don't you still do your hiking show? I do. I do. Okay. I'm coming off knee surgery, so it's been about three months since I've hiked. Okay. But I just started again, and it's called Hiking with Kevin. Yeah. I hike with a different celebrity in the canyons around Los Angeles, mostly. Um, and then we just kind of chat. I have a selfie stick and a What's drum. What's the best canyon? If I want to lose weight and walk through the canyons, which is the best canyon I should walk through around the Palisades or well, Redwood area? I I especially like Temescal Canyon. Yep. Because there's different choices in there. And also there's a canopy of trees on a mm -hmm. hot day. You just right. stay under there down below. If you stay at the bottom, it's kind of flat, but it's pretty. Ever since those big rains we had, it's kind of changed the way it looks too. The river started running through it. So the waterfall that I used to hike to at Temescal Canyon, oh, which was did? a trickle of nothing, you're saying now has water in it? I don't know about now, but <laughs> after we had all those rains, yeah. okay. I mean, it was flowing. And all in right. fact, the water was coming down so hard, it really transfixed the um the trail yeah it, it, i didn't even recognize it when i went back there it was just like flattened everything out yeah. and there was kind of people were diversing this way and right. around it so there's new trails all, all, right. all of a sudden all and right. if you don't like the flat if you really want to get in shape you could hike the loop which goes all the way up to the top you ever do that one i've done that i've also gone i find the Temesco canyon gets a little hard the footing gets a little strange the heart on the way to the waterfall it does yeah. a little rocky yeah, yeah. and i and i'm afraid i'm going to fall down and die 
So that, that could that, happen. That scares me a little. That bit. could happen. So I go, I'm much happier at the Will Rogers, uh, yeah, yeah. Pause, say, which is wide trails and yeah. you can, there's a different loop. It's it's yeah. it's much less rugged because you hear about these people. They find them down the side of the hill. Like, yeah, uh, there was a guy, some actor um, near Mount Baldy, I guess. He, they found he was gone for three or four days. They found him. At, he fell down a, a cliff or what, something. Which actor? I think it was. Tom Cruise? I want to say <laughs> see, Tom Cruise. See, that, my point is, even now, we yeah. don't know the name of that actor. All he wanted was to be famous. All he wanted was for people to know his name. And now we just know. Well, he didn't know his was name. He was, actor uh, I, he was a famous actor. Okay. I forget what his name is, but All not right. super famous. All right. You would know him if you saw him. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't want to be, uh, that's not how I want to die. Have we solved your problem yet at all? No, I want to be eaten by lions. If that, if I can choose a death. You know, it's funny. Uh, I was watching a video where this woman was a, uh, sort of accosted by a bear here in California in the mm -hmm. Santa Monica Mountains. She had it on video and she was screaming at the bear. It was far away. It wasn't yeah. coming at her, maybe a 50 yards away. And she would scream at it, scream at it. But yes, she was still videotaping it. So she couldn't have been that scared. <laughs> right, know? right. And I was actually hiking this morning and there was a little baby rattlesnake, which are more dangerous than the big rattlesnakes because mm -hmm. they have a lot of more venom. Okay. And they don't know what they're doing. Sure. You know? And uh, and I was thinking about the bear and the snake, and I was thinking, I should Google what is the best way to release a snake once it's biting you. Yeah. What do you squeeze it around his head or his neck? Right. Do you tie it in a knot? No. I'm gonna say no. You don't tie it in a knot. What's the best way to release a bear while he's biting you? <laughs> release a bear? No. Uh, I don't think no. you get to release the bear. The bear releases you. <laughs> Just to scare the bear away. Yeah. You know what I mean? The punch him in the nose. Isn't that the, the thing? You're supposed to that's punch him in the nose? That's a shark. Oh, okay. If you're accosted by a shark on the trail, that's what you do. Are you supposed to get big with a bear or small no, with a bear? No, that's a mountain lion, I think. Okay. I don't but know. what uh, what I would do is uh, I, I would probably... I, I keep going back thinking about that movie that with Leonardo DiCaprio. Was it was called The Revenant? Or yes. Was it Revenant? Was Revenant, it? yeah. How he was attacked by a bear. It was so realistic right. looking yeah. in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. I thought, oh my God, that must be a real they bear. They really, that's the thing. They filmed that he was really attacked by a bear. He was. They filmed that. It was he really a good actor. He's such a good actor. He's willing to do it. Some people yeah. were willing to gain some weight. Some people were willing to get attacked by a bear. Yeah, yeah. Have we now solved that, your problem yet? You not solved my problem. Because how do I walk? This is the question. Let's you, pinpoint you, on your exact problem. But here. I'm using you as an example. You walk through the world. You're a father. You're a husband, you went hiking, you had, you know, but yet you're a performer and you go and do your act and you go, you have kind of exciting life and a regular life. I do, but I also have problems like you. What, what problems do you have? Well, let's fix yours first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have problems that I'm too embarrassed to tell you what okay, they are. Okay, you don't have to talk about that. That's fine. Um, you know, but there it, was one although, time where I... <laughs> <laughs> although we have a premium level on this podcast where you get to hear celebrities really oh, horrible problems. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's just like really the bare oh, bones disgusting stuff. I got stuff. some stuff to throw me in jail. <laughs> okay, now, perfect. You know, we'll yeah, save it, I'll save, save it for the premium that, yeah. level. Exactly. Um, I so, so just to narrow it down for me. Pay two fifty a month. In a nutshell, what is your biggest problem? I'm, I guess it can boil down to this. I'm not sure as I go through, walk through my life that I'm doing it right. So I who feel, is? well, I don't know. Some people feel like they might be doing it right. And at least some people are comfortable doing it wrong. Comfortable, yeah. And I am, I can, I'm moderately comfortable, but clearly I have a lot of anxiety and I eat that anxiety. So that's my weight You're issue. an emotional eater? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I am too. Yeah. When I get home at night or if I'm nervous about something, I'll find myself eating and I'll recognize that it's emotional eating because right. I'm full. I don't, I'm not hungry. Yeah. You know, um, you know but, what good, but you look good. You, I mean, you're you're vegetarian, right? Pescatarian now. Pescatarian, okay. I was a vegetarian for about thirty five. Not years. getting enough protein is that? Well, why? when my wife got pregnant, we, yeah. she was a vegetarian too, only because she saw me eating healthy. Right. Well, she's from Nashville, and she she used to eat bacon and sure, you know, all that uh, pulled pork, pulled bacon, every kind of meat right. you could pull. She <laughs> ate it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pull every every kind of meat? Is I guess there, so. Yeah, I, don't I guess know. you could. I don't know what that process yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I think it involves pulling. And you pull it to the fire I'm not pit. a chef, but I think you might want to pull it apart. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, she got pregnant. I don't know how she got pregnant, but she did. And she was craving protein like if fish. If you really don't know how she got pregnant, we should talk. Because no, that's, a that's a problem. That's a problem I want to talk about. That you may want to discuss. She said she wanted to swim through the ocean with her mouth open. That's okay. what the fish she wanted. All right. And so we both started eating wild salmon. Good right. fish. Right. You know? 
And um, yeah, so, but the other reason uh, why I look like I'm in shape right now doesn't really have a lot to do with, you know, go training and right. going all, I do hike, but it's not, it's not really, it's walking in the right. woods, but strolling. Sure. With my hands. Can you stroll without your hands clasped behind your back? That's, <laughs> no. that's how you call strolling. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, either that or you're a perp and they're leading you away. Yeah. That's, that's what I immediately thought of that stroll. The, the, the perp walk. They're pulling the, you away. Yes, the versus, pull perp. Right. Exactly. Um, so what happened to me, and I didn't know this would happen. I had knee surgery three months ago and you know, I've laid up for like three months. I thought, oh man, I'm, I'm going to be eating and gaining some weight. I better get some sweatpants. Right. And the opposite, I started losing weight. Every morning I get on the scale and the weight was going down, going down. I thought, oh, I must have some kind of disease now. Right. And the doctor said, what happens is all of your metabolism is trying to heal that knee. Everything is going to that so knee. It's working overtime to fix the knee. Right. And also you're taking painkillers. Right. So you're not hungry. Right. And it was just astounding how much weight I was losing. So you're get telling your me replaced. I need to get hands on some painkillers. <laughs> Have your knee replaced I hear, first. I'm hearing, no, no. I'm just hearing painkillers. Painkillers. And then, and then give my body something to heal. Yeah. You okay. know, I know some people, I almost named her, but they would go to the dentist with no problem in the mouth just to get drugs. Right. That yeah. is a, that's a problem. I'm not good with you drugs. You never did so drugs, did you? No, I don't do drugs. Coke. I, Coke, I did Coke once. You did? I did Coke once and it gave me such a horrible, horrible headache at the end of it that I said, oh, I'm never going to do that again. It didn't, the good part didn't feel as bad as the bad part. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't do that. I, I smoke pot and it does nothing for me. It makes me quiet. It makes my eyes hurt. Yeah, So hungry, I'm not- Hungry? Uh, hungry, yeah. I'm hungry, quiet, hungry. Yeah. I want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, so I know. So I don't, none of those drugs seem to be great for me except you know, a mush I've done mushrooms twice in my life, and both times, fantastic. Really? Fantastic. Fantastic. <gasps> Someday. What do they call it? Psilocybin or something? Yeah. I got to try that sometime. Fantastic. It's, it's, really, it's not that harmful, is it? Can you have a bad trip? As, as somebody who's done it twice, I, I can actually tell you. Of course you can have a bad trip, but you should do you should go with somebody who's not on go it out and, to joshua tree yeah, yeah and just that's uh, what I heard. do that i mean just uh, go i went with my uh a buddy of mine um uh george meyer from the simpsons oh i know george and meyer and he, yeah army yeah uh, so army man and army he man. uh he had he had mushrooms and we went to go see the grateful dead and it was fantastic that seems so unlike george <laughs> uh but you know i've never done coke in my life yeah i smoked a little pot when i was going through a divorce yeah and um, I don't. You even, have to. The the the, yeah, the law yeah. makes you. The lawyer had told me. <laughs> right. Uh, and but I I, I I never really drink anymore. Maybe a glass of wine right. every two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Yeah. Um, but you know, in my thirties, I would you know on the weekends I was a weekend warrior, right. tequila and stuff. Right. And um, that's part of your normal guy stuff, though. See, the normal guys get get yeah. drunk on the weekend and do that. I never did that either. Yeah. I my went weekend to sort of started on, on film Thursday. festivals, animation film festivals. That's <laughs> yeah. weird. And then you always go out to uh, Coachella. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like that, I've, Burning Man. I'm never in the mainstream of that kind of stuff. I wish I was. Anyway, when I have a glass of wine now, yep. my son looks at me. He's 16, like, like I'm an alcoholic. If I have just one glass right. of wine, yeah, it's like, yeah, what are you doing? Good. What are you doing? Good. He's protecting you. Yeah. He's have you been out to? Have you ever gone to Burning Man? Would you like want to go there? Uh, I don't think there's a, any amount of money that can get me out there. Because then you'd have some big problems. I would. I've not been. It's. It seems dusty and dirty and filthy. And then people. That's the weird part. Like, like if I was, if I was a weirdo, I'd want to go to Burning Man. I'd want to. If I was, I'd want to go out there and go into the sex tent and go into the. <laughs> Do they have a sex tent? Oh, they have a sex tent, and then and um, I have a friend who plays the tuba half naked on a bicycle and does that for a week. Like, he, is he part of the sex tent? <laughs> he may have gone in the sex tent. We really haven't talked about it, but I mean, it's uh, like you can you can be an, your own individual, and it's all about sort of for the sake of art which I like, yeah. but I don't feel like it's really for the sake of art because there's people there from like Fortune 500 companies and, yeah. and, and, and See, and, those are the people that want to get out of their normal normalcy. Yeah. They want to be crazy, but they're not really crazy. They're testing it. They're putting their foot in the- Right, they're, they're toe in the water. crazy. Yeah. I don't want to be faux crazy. I want to authentically walk through the world as uniquely me. Yeah. Okay, let's take it down a notch. Would you go to Coachella? Yeah. You would? Sure. I wouldn't go there. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm now when the concert's going on. Oh no, <laughs> is it still called Coachella when there's yeah, no concert? Yeah, oh yeah, it's a place. I would go there. Oh. There's a great gas station. There's stuff there. Okay, you know? but no, not when the concert's going. No, I would actually go to a concert if I had Bonnaroo. Pe yeah, you I like music. Thing? I like music, so I would Woodstock? go. Woodstock? Would you go to Woodstock? Um, 
There's nothing going on there now. Nothing going on now there. But like in 1969, then? Oh man. I might have gone. You weren't old enough though. No, I was You weren't you were not even a hippie. Five. So it was probably too early for me. I was sixteen, I think. Yeah. And and uh, I was a pseudo hippie, you know, I wore the medallions and the sure. Nehru jacket yeah. and had the long hair. You could have gone to Woodstock. I think we even talked about hitchhiking up yeah. there. Because that's what you do as a hippie. Sure. And and first you, we weren't able to not take a shower for a week before then, so we thought, <laughs> oh, we can't go. Right. You know. Right. You were too clean. Yeah, I was yeah. much too clean. Well, if you had gone there, you would have gotten pretty filthy pretty quickly. Do you think um do you think people can smell your BO? Do you have BO? I put on deodorant today, so I can't tell. But probably it's masking the deodorant may be masking the BO. Yeah. I mean, I the other day I smelled myself and go, oh my God. I yeah. how I, surprised my wife hasn't said anything yeah. yet about it and, but normally but i don't did it bother you in other words i can i if i smell if i've worked and i smell a little bit it's like oh i smell like that i don't feel like it's horrible to me it i did, think i might yeah. be offending other people but it doesn't bother me it didn't bother me yeah but i knew it would bother other people yeah. which would bother me right so kind of a, on a second level it would bother me i probably might do it as a test to my wife to see if she's actually paying any attention to me at all Speaking of wife, yes, I've got to leave right now. Okay, but I want to come back and really just do like an hour or an hour okay. and a half. Well, whatever then, you do, then this, then we'll do that. We'll do that, and let's put it. But, let's put it in the books. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. So Kevin Nealon had to leave early because he hates me, and so. You know, I expect guests to walk out on me during the middle of shows. That just happens. So it's cool. I'm sure it happens to Joe Rogan. I'm sure it happens to Howard Stern. I watch their shows all the time and I see guests walk out all the time. So it's cool. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear anything negative about that. Uh, Kevin said he did, actually had an emergency. He had to leave, but he will be back. But I figured even if it's a shortened episode, we should still answer one of uh, our lovely listener mail. Now it's time for listener mail. And here's a question from Mike, who writes, Why is Adam Sandler so famous when he makes lousy movies and does not seem to be especially funny? Is he such a comedic genius that his sense of humor goes over my head? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, no, I don't think Adam Sandler is makes lousy movies necessarily. I don't. I think that he makes movies that are wonderful for a particular audience, and you may not be that audience, and that's fine. Adam Sandler has a huge audience that is massive and does just fine without you. That's the thing about comedy, though. It's it's a matter of taste. You might like Preston Sturges. Uh, over Adam Sandler. Um, and I I certainly like Preston Sturges over Adam Sandler, but I've actually watched Adam Sandler grow into kind of a good actor. And I've watched some Adam Sandler movies be incredibly funny and others not so much. So I think the, the, the reason why Adam Sandler is so successful is a real lesson in comedy, which is he's giving off a persona, which I believe is probably mostly like him, that he's being authentic. He's being real about who he is. And authenticity is kind of something I'm, I'm striving for these days with you on this podcast and with people in my life. And so I respect Adam for sort of doing that. And he's trying to be funny in his own way. And yes, he is a, I'm assuming, 60-year-old 60, 60 man talking like a baby, uh, which, which is unusual for a 60-year-old man, man go, yeah, I, I you know, want some pie. But whatever he does, it's how he feels. And so... It works for him and works for people, and maybe someday it won't work, but right now it's absolutely working. And I recognize him as a guy who's grown a lot, and he's a good, known as a good guy. You know, he was more immature earlier on his life, and now he's matured and he's become successful, and that's great. Um, so I salute Adam Sandler for all the things he does, and he's trying a million things at Netflix. You know, he makes these movies that are gigantic hit movies on Netflix. He's had an animated movie coming out. He had mystery movies with uh, with uh, Jennifer Aniston, and he's done a bunch of things that have been kind of interesting and, and cool. I don't love everything he does, honestly. I don't, but I respect a lot of what he does, and I respect his authenticity and how he tries to be himself, and he tries to make good movies. You know, it's hard to make movies, so he tries to really make good movies and, and really funny movies, and he often succeeds. So, Mike, it's not for you, it's just, and it's not that it's going over your head. I think you're understanding the movie. It's just not your taste. Somebody can make an incredible, beautiful gourmet meal and you can still hate it. 
even if Michelin uh, rates it three stars or four stars, it's that Michelin doesn't have four stars. Why would I even say that? Jay, you're an idiot. Michelin has three stars. That's the most you can have. But if you, you don't have to like what they're serving, but you can understand that it's still made with care and with thought using all the great precepts of cooking. Adams is using all the precepts of comedy that he has within him. And, you know, he has really talented people around him, Tim Hurley, he and all those people to sort of make great movies. Um, so he's trying his best, like we all are. I've written really some really funny, wonderful things and I've written some really terrible things. And every time I wrote something, I tried to make it great. So it's not always going to be great. I haven't done it as well as Adam Sandler because my audience isn't nearly as big. So I think comedy, at least it used to be, that comedy was appealing to a mass audience. Now it may be more niche uh, as we go forward. Um, and in which case, I'm in for the big bucks because I am so niche. This is this moment is niche. Look, at I can see through the camera. There's over 20 of you watching me at this very moment. So that's my niche, the 20 of you. And if we, each one of you could send in $20,000 at uh, don't be alone with Jake Oka, D-B-A-W-J-K at gmail.com. Each of the 20 send in $20,000. We could make this thing really work. This thing could really hum. And I'd put you on the premium list. Don't think you're not getting anything for your $20,000. You're going to get something special. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> I promise you. Anyway, that's my answer to you, Mike. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has uh, been a very interesting mini episode or bridged episode or what have you. But uh, I'm uh, grateful that Kevin could be here for the time he could uh, until he absolutely couldn't stand it anymore and stand my presence and he had to leave. I get it totally forgiven. So anyway, please write to me at uh, dbawjk at gmail.com with all your suggestions, your viewer mail, all that stuff. And I'm glad we could at least spend this time together. I want to say in all honesty, there's a great big world out there. Please share something with somebody and don't be alone. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Don't be